Hello, amazing, beautiful artists. Welcome back to another Art Life Conversations podcast. I am your host, artist, teacher, author, mentor, business coach, Kelly Folsom. And I'm super excited today because we are going to be doing our first podcast in the new year, 2023. How amazing is that? Who is excited for 2023? I am so, so excited. So today, the topic is going to be on setting your intention and reinvention how to reinvent yourself, your art perhaps, your art business perhaps, in 2023. And I want you to stick around to the very end. You're going to want to stick around to the very end because I'm going to be walking you through a guided meditation at the end, which will help you to um, create your theme for 2023 and set your intention for 2023. So, First, I want to dive into this topic of reinvention, right? So, so much of the time and intention both go hand in hand, I feel. So much of the time we end up living our lives on autopilot, right? Being stuck in the way things are. We often are sacrificing the important for the urgent, right? For whatever needs to be done on the to-do list next, right? Running around, putting out fires, doing what's next on the on the list. This leaves us living our lives in reaction mode, not in intentional mode, okay? Um, this is a problem. Um, okay, so it gives us very, very little time. We're so busy that it gives us very little time to really think about who we want to be, what we want to create, let alone devise a plan on how we're actually going to take action on that and accomplish that. So there is a really funny episode on Seinfeld. I don't know if you guys watch Seinfeld, but the character George on Seinfeld in this episode, he becomes fed up. He becomes fed up with himself, with his life and the way that things are going, basically with the results that he's getting. Um, and so it's called Opposite George. So in this episode, he decides, Scary, it's all wrong. My life isn't going well. The way that I'm doing life is not working. It's a very silly and very extreme example, okay? But he decides to begin to do everything the opposite way of what his natural autopilot mode would naturally do. And it's a funny episode because, of course, he ends up getting the girl, you know, getting the beautiful girl, getting a job, all, all those things, right, by being opposite George, by doing things the opposite way. Again, it's an extreme, silly and funny example of reinvention, but I think it's actually really a good one, right? So he realizes how much he is doing in automatic reaction mode and how much he is stuck in his um, current existing personality and identity. So, and he decides to change that, right? I think it's actually a really powerful, um, a powerful example. Um, okay, so our focus, you know, in, in the Art Life School this month and for myself, right, as we're moving into 2023, is really about creating, moving into 2023 with intention, right, with a sense of purpose. And so really, I would like all of us to think about what is it that, you know, you really want? What do you really want in 2023? Not what you think everybody else wants or what you think is the good thing to want um, or the successful thing to want, but what do you really, really want in 2023 for yourself and for your life? What do you want to accomplish, right? And these are great questions to take time with and actually journal with. So you can jot these down and then actually journal on them after the podcast. Who do you want to become, right? Um, what potential does your future self, I, wanna, I want to propose to you that there is more than one you. <laughs> there is what more than one potentiality for you, right? So I don't believe that our personality, that our identity is fixed. In fact, I know that to be false because my personality, has, my mindset, my personality, my identity has evolved and changed so much over the last 15 years, right? So what potential does your future self want you to see actualized in your life? What would it look like if you 
totally reinvented yourself this year. Um, that could be reinventing yourself completely. It could be reinventing your art, perhaps. Maybe you're stuck in your art and you want to reinvent that. Maybe you want to reinvent your business. Um, whatever the case may be, like, what would it look like? You don't ask how, you don't go into how because that shuts down the creativity. You say, hmm, what would it look like if I was super successful? What would it look like if I was creatively fulfilled and happy and um, living, being my best self and living my best absolute life? What would that look like, right? And then what is your intention for 2023? What is your real, real intention for 2023? And again, this requires quiet. This requires going inward. And at the end of this, I will do a guided meditation for you, which will help you to really receive your intention, right? Receive your intention from your highest self for 2023. So, um, so again, I don't feel like our personality is is fixed, right? Uh, the world wants to tell us that it is. Maybe family members want us to stay in the same personality or stay in the same identity because that's who they knew us to be, right? But I think there's actually multiple potentials, right? Multiple versions of ourselves that we can reach to into the future and become that by just, and here is the trick, by just deciding to do it. Right. Just making a decision. Enough of this. I'm sick of this or I just desire something different. Um, but just deciding, deciding that you want it and that you're going to go for it. So, for example, how do you think that I became an artist? Right. I wasn't always an artist. <laughs> I wasn't always an artist. I didn't always call myself an artist. I decided in 2007 that I was going to reinvent my myself and my life and that I would become an artist. Right. So I made that choice and then I took action towards that decision. Right. And day by day, minute by minute hour by hour, I built my new identity as an artist by building my skills, by changing my behaviors, by doing behaviors that an artist would do, right? So again, asking like, what would it look like if I was an artist? How would I show up if I was an artist? How would I behave if I was an artist, right? And then therefore walking in those steps that an artist would walk in, right? So that's what it ends up looking like whenever you get to the how and whenever you get to the reality of the change and the reinvention. Also, how did I build the art life school? Right. So I reinvented myself and my teaching business. And I decided that I was someone who was comfortable teaching online and wanted to work with hundreds of people at a time, not just half a dozen at a time, because my my uh, view of an art teacher, there was only a couple of views that I knew of. And one was teaching at a university or a college, which I did that. OK, did not like it, did not enjoy it, was sick of it, only did it for a year. And I was like, I cannot do this anymore. This is not for me. And then the other way was by teaching workshops or in class and in class or in person classes to say half a dozen people or a dozen people. OK, anywhere from there. And so I decided, like, no, I'm going to reinvent this art teaching uh, for myself. I'm going to do it differently. And when I started doing it back in 2018, very few people were doing it. So it really was um, <laughs> kind of a revolutionary thing to do at the time. And that's how I ended up teaching online and teaching hundreds of people and touching hundreds of lives every week through the what's now called the Art Life School. All right. Also, how did I become somebody who has confidence, who who takes action with courage and faith and also loves herself? Right. If you ask any of my family members who have known me my whole life, they will tell you that I was not somebody who had a lot of self-esteem. OK, I was not somebody who was confident necessarily. Um, I had intelligence. I had talent. But I really did not have a super high self-esteem, you guys. And what a lot of people didn't know about me was that I lived in a lot of fear. I had a lot of self-doubt, negative self-talk. 
inner criticism and I lived in fear of making different choices, of trying things out and trying different things. So how did I become who I am now, which is confident, which has courage and takes bold action and takes takes risks, which yes, sometimes does not work out and has truly learned to love myself well, because I decided that that's who I wanted to become. That's who I wanted to be, right? I decided that I was sick and tired, sick and tired of beating myself up. Hopefully I don't cry on this because <laughs> some of the pain is still um, is still touchable for me, right? Um, and because I still work through some of these things. Like it's not like it's one and done or, okay, I never have to worry about you know, not loving myself anymore, right? But I decided I was sick and tired of that, right? And I was tired of living my life dictated by fear. So I threw myself into the intention of not living that way, right? And 10 years later, or actually it's been about 15 years later, my mindset is completely different. My mindset has completely changed, right? Um, and I remember the first year of going to art school and I would listen to this CD by, yes, a CD by Susan Jeffers called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And I would listen to that thing on repeat every day in the car. Sorry. <laughs> so I think that this is, and the reason why I'm, I'm crying is because it is so real. And I remember that old version of myself and how scared she was and how intimidated she was and how filled with self-doubt she was. And I love, love, love her dearly. And I have loved her into confidence, right? Into self-love now. So, but it has to begin with you. It has to begin with us making that choice, making that decision that we are going to make a change. Um, and, you know, what I'll say is if you think you can't teach an old dog new tricks, well, then you're right. Right. And what if it didn't matter how old the dog was? I again, I think that that is uh, not true as well, because it doesn't. And the other thing is like our society teaches us that like at 65, right? It's time to stop working. I think that's baloney. I don't think that that's true anymore. In fact, it's been proven and shown and studied that our lifespans now have extended out to 100 years old. And yet our our society framework and our mindset has not caught up with the fact that we are living longer, right? And that we're, we're healthier and we're more with it in our minds, even into our old, old age, you know, eighties and nineties. So it's all mindset. Like you get to choose what you want to do with this life, right? So what are you going to do with your life? Okay. I'm out of breath. <laughs> So, you know, things like, are you going to go and play golf? You know, maybe you are retired. <laughs> it's like, I, I think it's crazy that somebody would think, oh, I'm retired, so I don't have to work anymore. Now I'm just going to sit around and watch news and TV, putter about the house and maybe go play golf. Like, why is that perfectly acceptable in our, at least our American culture? That's five hours. Playing a round of golf is like five hours out of your day. And for what? Right? Like you could be learning a new language, writing a book. Anybody can write a book now. It's crazy. I wrote a book. Right? I've got other books I'm writing. Paint a painting. Build your art business. Create a new marketing plan in that five hours. Maybe you have past skill sets that you can start doing independent contracting work, consulting on Upwork for business owners or, you know, whatever. Uh, proofreading for people, you know, like just because you don't have a quote unquote career or full time job doesn't mean that the skills that you built were obsolete, right? Or are obsolete. You could still be offering those things. In fact, I've had I've hired so many people, for example, on Upwork to help me proofread my book and do marketing work for me and do administrative assistance, things like that. So it could be those are just a few examples, right? It could be anything like what else could you do with your time in five hours? And listen, I'm not putting down playing golf and things like that. I'm just trying to raise our consciousness, raise our awareness of, you know, hey, you, you're you not too old, right? It, you're not too old and it's never too late. There is not an expiration date on your heart's desires, on your soul's 
dreams, right? So I'm challenging myself, I challenge myself all the time, and you to break the cycle of normal, like the perception of what normal is. Like create your own normal for crying out loud, right? In a new year, right? We're, we're entering into a new year and this is a perfect time. It's a great time to do it. It's like a ritualistic threshold, right? That we get to cross intentionally if we choose every single year. We get to let go of the past, we get to wipe the slate clean, and we get to start again in the new year. And unfortunately, a lot of people do this by way of, say, um, going, I'm going to lose that 20 pounds, and, and they set these goals, right? And listen, I'm a huge, huge believer in goals. I love setting goals. I love achieving goals. I think they work. I think new developing new habits work. They go hand in hand, right? I don't think you can have one without the other necessarily. But the other thing that I think is more important is, again, that intention. Like instead of just like, oh, I'm going to set a goal to start exercising every day. But why? Like what is your intention for the year? What do you want to embody this year? How do you want to feel every day? Right. Um, who do you again? Who do you want to become? So and a lot of times this does start with, you know, what you're sick and tired of, what you're sick and tired of tolerating, of settling for. You know, you're sick and tired of not believing in yourself, not applying yourself. You know, maybe it's a feeling that you're sick and tired like me of my self-doubt that I had 15 years ago or giving into fear and not taking action because I was too scared to go to a class, you know, and and do artwork in front of people. Right. Like maybe that's what you're saying. No to this year and you're, you're sick and tired of it. You're ready to, you know, be vulnerable. You're ready to take action. You're ready to fail, right, in order to succeed. <laughs> you're ready perhaps to be embarrassed, um, to be scared, to be criticized in order to succeed, to get the feedback that you need to succeed as an artist. Maybe this is a year that you finally overcome procrastination, right? Are you sick of it? Are you sick and tired of procrastinating? Right. You want to develop a new persona, a new version of yourself that you are an action taker. You follow through. You GSD. You get shit done. Right. And you're sick of it. You're sick of procrastinating. You're sick of avoiding. You're going to change that this year. I'm going to change that in my personality this year. I am no longer a procrastinator. I am a doer. Right. So this is what it takes is making that choice and then stepping into that version of yourself every day. Maybe this is the year that you stop watching TV or mindlessly scrolling social media and getting jealous of other people and getting FOMO, right? And jealousy is just like a little knock on your heart's door. Hey, this is something that you desire. You desire that success, right? You desire that achievement. You desire those skills, right? So don't get jealous. Make yourself better. Grow. Get better. OK, uh, maybe this is a year that you stop gossiping. Stop gossiping. It's literally poison to you. It does nothing good. In fact, all it does is just spread poison. Maybe this is a year you're saying no to that. Like, nope, not gossiping. I'm only going to speak blessings over people. I'm only going to speak blessings over myself and over others. OK, maybe this is a year you stop living in scarcity. Yes, 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 yes. Maybe you are scared to invest any money. Maybe you've been in the past, maybe in the past, you have been somebody who is scared to invest money. And I'm saying investing, not spending for a reason, because the middle class is raised to think that any amount of money that they that they put out there is spending and spending is bad and debt is bad. Look, not all debt is bad. Some debt is good. In fact, my hundred thousand dollars of debt to go to art school was a great debt. It bought me four years of time to myself to be able to build a new life for myself, to build a new skill set for myself. Right. Was it fun paying that debt off? No, it wasn't. But I had to take that debt on in order to get to where I am. OK, so maybe the past version of you has been scared to invest money, right? Invest money in your art, invest money in your business. I know people, I know artists who won't even invest in quality supplies and their artwork suffers for it, right? Because they're so trapped by this scarcity mentality, okay? 
scared to invest any money in your own happiness, getting therapy that you need, maybe going and, and taking that trip that you've dreamed of taking, right? Scared to invest money to build their skill set, right? And learn, gain new knowledge and learn new information that's going to make their life better. That's actually going to lead to abundance. So maybe you're sick of that and you're ready to start living in abundance, in trust and faith and, you know, always knowing that you are going to be safe and taken care of. That's what abundance feels like. It feels light as a feather. It feels like I'm just, I'm divinely protected. I'm taken care of, right? And I know that I am worthy of all of my needs being met. So maybe, and maybe this year is the year that you stop trying to constantly fix yourself, right? Like you're broken or something and you start actually loving yourself, right? That's actually how we quote unquote fix ourselves. There's nothing to fix, right? But many of us just need to love and accept ourselves. And that's how we actually start opening up to more growth, right? So what is your intention for 2023? Maybe some of these examples that I've given you from my own life, all of these are from my own life, by the way. <laughs> um, maybe some of these examples have sparked some new desires in you or made you think about things a little bit differently, right? Maybe it's just a little pause in your autopilot mode. Um, so what is your intention for 2023? What are you going for this year? What are you going to go all in on this year? How would you, if you could, if you had a magic wand and you could reinvent yourself and reinvent your life to make it like the absolute best, this is the absolute best dream life I could possibly dream of for you, not what Hollywood tells us, right? Not what society tells us, but for you, really you, authentically you, what is the best case scenario, your best dream life, right? If you could reinvent your life, if you could, how would you do it? Like, what would that look like if you did? And I believe that you can because I've done it, right? And I've seen countless others do it. So for Art Life School members, January 6th, we are having um, a New Year's party. And I want you to really, uh, and we're going to kick it off first and foremost with this intention setting uh, meditation and then going into some goal setting process, right? I believe first you need to set your intention and have clarity of what you're letting go of and what you're stepping into before you begin to set goals. Because you do not want to set goals out of your old self. Right. OK, so um, out of an old mindset, out of an autopilot mindset or an autopilot self, you don't want to set goals from that place. So please don't jump to that step until you really consider all of these things. So on January 6th, I'm asking you if you're an Art Life School member or if you're in the Art Stars Inner Circle to really do this journal processing before that New Year's party that we have. Right. To journal on these questions and go deep before you show up. Um, Friday because um, yeah because we're gonna do some goal setting um, okay and for those of you who maybe are not in the art life school uh, program and you're ready to reinvent yourself maybe reinventing your art or building those skills in your art is one thing that you want to do this year then hey I got you you're invited to join us in the art life school it is open for enrollment. So, and you can get in before January 6th. If this is like lighting you up, like, yes, this is, I, this is the teacher. This is a mentor that I've been looking for to help me on this path. Then go check it out at artlifewithkelly, K-E-L-L-I.com. All right. So now we're going to take a deep breath. Okay. And I'm just going to walk you through um, a guided meditation. This podcast will be a little bit longer for this reason today. Um, so I just want you to close your eyes. Okay. And I want you to take a deep breath. And then take another deep breath. And as you do, visualize the number three, three times. Three, three, three. Visualize it and speak it. Another deep breath, and as you exhale, two, two, two. Another deep breath, and as you exhale, out, one, one, one. And now I'm going to count down from 10 to 1, and we're going to 
just get super, super relaxed, super calm, super relaxed as you keep breathing. Just hand on heart, quiet, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And now I want you to imagine that there is this orb of light surrounding you. You're in this light sphere, this light bubble, and you're going to start floating up. I want you to float up, 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 higher, 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 out of your room, out of your home, out of the roof, out of the building perhaps that you live in, up into the clouds. You're looking down on the earth seeing everything from way, way up above. You see your city from way up above. You see your country from way up above. And now you're going to go up even further out into outer space in your light orb. You are surrounded by the stars and you can see the planet Earth and you can see other planets in the universe and you're out here in outer space. And now I want you to visualize a door, a doorway. This is the doorway that you are beginning to walk towards. Just visualize what it looks like for you. What color is it? What does it look like? Is it or does it have ornamentation around it? Whatever comes to you is supposed to come to you. And you're beginning to move towards that door. Now this is the doorway into 2023. Okay, we're going to be walking through this portal into 2023. But before we open that door and go in, I just want you to look around. Okay, and I want you to visualize that you have this trash bag, this big black trash bag <laughs> from 2022. And you're going to start to put everything in this trash bag that no longer serves you, every experience, every thought, every energy, and you're going to put it in this trash bag before you cross over into 2023. So just think about everything that you want to release. And if there's any hurts, any grudges, any resentment, as you think of them and you're putting them in this trash bag, I want you to forgive yourself, forgive the other person as you're placing it in the trash bag. Because we don't want to carry any of that with us. So anything that you need to forgive yourself for or anybody else, you say, I forgive you. And imagine them asking you for forgiveness and you saying, I accept, I accept your requests for forgiveness and I forgive you. Thank you. Thank you for apologizing. Thank you for saying I'm sorry. Thank you for saying that I didn't mean to hurt you. And once you have all those things in the trash bag, now I want you to tie it up and we're going to release it. Okay. So if for you, if that is throwing it over your head into outer space, if that is lighting it on fire visually, whatever the case may be, release it, let it go. If it's just a gentle releasing, letting it flow off into outer space, whatever feels right, feels appropriate to you, go ahead and do that now. And when you're ready, when you're feeling loose, when you're feeling light, when you're feeling free of all of that baggage, I want you to reach out reach for the door handle when you're ready and walk through the door. And as you walk through the door, you just feel whatever energy comes over you. Whatever feeling comes over, you just feel it, soak it up. And I want you to imagine that you are encountering a version of yourself as you walk through this door. And I want you to just observe her or him. What is she doing? 
What are they doing? What do they feel? Maybe even what they're wearing, what they look like. Just observe what they are doing in 2023. This is a twin version of yourself. This is a version of you that you have not been before and that you're ready to become. So just observe and just visualize what that is. How do you want to behave in 2023? What do you want? What do you want to achieve? Just allow that to, to wash over you. This is your highest self speaking to you in this moment. And if there's a phrase or a word that's coming to you, just allow it to come to you. If there's symbols or images that are coming to you, just allow those to come to you right now in this moment. And finally, once you receive any messages that are coming to you, any words, any symbols, sometimes they come in symbols. And if you do get a symbol, make sure that you look that symbol up or just feel into it. What, did, what do you feel like that symbol means? Trust your intuition. And once you have that, I want you to walk towards, I want you to walk towards this twin personality of yourself that you have observed. And I want you to visualize you and her merging together into one person into one person. And in every day, in every way, you're getting better and better. And you are becoming the person that you long to be. You're creating the life that you dream of having. You're doing all the play things that you love to play with. You're having all the fun. You're having all the love that you long for. You're having all the abundance that you long for. It is yours. It is your birthright. And so you join, join, unite with this personality that you've envisioned here for 2023. And now you're going to walk back out and come back down here to where we are. Five, four, three, two, one, and you're here now. You are here, you're back in your body. You can open your eyes. And what I would recommend you do is journal. Write down anything that came to you during this guided meditation and just claim, write down what your intention is for 2023. And feel free to share it in the comments below if you want to. Share it within the Art Life School community if you want to. Share it with a loved one. If you got a symbol, I recommend that you investigate and research that symbol or again, just feel into it because symbols can mean multiple different things. Um, and I also recommend that you go and acquire that symbol. If you received a sign or a symbol, find something that replicates that symbol for you in your life and have that as a visual reminder for yourself throughout the year of 2023. Okay, my friends, if you're an Art Life School member, I'm going to see you on Friday. And we are going to do some amazing goal setting process on Friday now that we have released 2022 and gain clarity on what our intention is for 2023. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I'm wishing you all happy creating and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.